Good morning, everyone. It's Saturday, the 13th of June. Oh my God, we're in June. That's incredible. Who thought that would happen? Um, and today we bring you a pair, a fresh flush pair of Selesnya decks. We're going to have a quick look at both. Um, we're going to run a Vigilance Selesnya build and a Life Gain Selesnya build, both of which run March the Multitudes because it's just such a good card. We'll have a quick look at the Vigilance one. We'll play a couple of games of that and then we'll switch over. So with the idea of this is just sort of controlling the board out a little bit to be able to get to our big bombs at the end. Starting off with a couple of copies, three in fact, of Law Rune Enforcer. So tactile creature greater mana cost. Well, sorry, converted mana cost of two or greater. So that's nice to take out some Uros if they come in a bit later. Uh, Dream Trawler potentially if they've got no cards in hand. Questing Beast, all these kind of things that could give us a huge problem. Uh, Law Rune Enforcer takes care of those. We then got Bounty Agent, which I think was underplayed slightly. Destroy Target Legendary Permanent an Artifact Creature or Enchantment. Goodbye, Ozolith. Goodbye, Questing Beast. Goodbye, Kaya's Wrath. All this, sorry, Oath of Kaya. All these kind of things go. Uh, Daxos. Whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, gain life. Imagine that, and then just ping in a march of the multitudes. So not only do the creatures that come in have life gain, you gain life off of all the creatures that enter as well. Hartley's Raptor. Now, this is the first part, Vigilance, which is part of the main theme of the deck, and well, it is because it's the name, and then Proliferate. Proliferate's nice and handy for later on in the game when we get to Knight of Autumn, uh, Johnny's Strength of Pride with the uh, Johnny's Pride Mates, um, Ajani the Great Hearted, and then Nissa as well, all of which creating uh, counters onto creatures. And then Hartley's Raptor just boosting those creatures up a little bit more. Hopefully, which is why we're only running two, because if you need it early game for a bit of block, we've got it there. But it's nice as a quick, nice little sorcery speed uh, boost towards the end. Uh, three copies of Banishing Light, because I think it might be my favorite card of all time. Uh, four copies of Light Heal Bonder, because Vigilance and Lifelink, etc., etc. Questing Beast, because it's got Vigilance and it's massive. And why wouldn't you? Um, three Fondland Felidar, which would be very nice to give all of our lands tap one and tap it and tap target creature. That's fun. And then three copies in this set and three copies of March with a 22 land base with slightly less planes um, purely because Nissa getting forests out from the deck is really handy later on. And then we're going to run four gardens, two plenties and two passages. So we'll do a couple of games of this. Uh, I'm going to stress once again that these decks are absolutely not uh, competitive from what I found so far in the slightest. But they're good fun. And that's what magic is. It should be fun. We shouldn't all be playing counter spells. That is not a dig at anybody, apart from everybody that plays counter magic, including me. And now we just wait and see with how slow... Oh, every time I do that, it then suddenly pings off as ready. Hello, Katosi. Are you a victim or are you my murderer? You're playing Yorian. You're my murderer. Excellent. Let's do this slowly. We've got a nice little turn one, turn two, turn three, which is good. They're going first. Oh, uh, you're going to ramp. This should be fun. See, look, this is now my massive issue with people, is that if you are going to play massively competitive decks, go and do it in the ranked section. Don't come into here where the rest of us are trying to make janky YouTube channels and ruin it for the fun. But this is where cards like Bounty Agent come in handy. Because then people that go, oh, I've just net decked this, suddenly have no clue what Bounty Agent does, and that's my favorite thing. And then you've got to read it and adjust their entire plan. Oh, you spent money on that. Oh, you sad man. Says me. Cool, you're ramping, aren't you, mate? Okay, this is where Heed Bonder comes into its element because it's going to come down. We're not going to swing and then we're going to gain two life in the turn. It's absolutely brilliant. Especially when you can find a turn two and then a uh, turn three play afterwards. Probably looking at Elite Guard Mage getting tapped down by Law Enforcer next, but we will see. Okay, there's our march. We're not pulling as much land as I thought we might do. That's potentially going to hit us for two next turn. We can take that. That's fine. So I suggest we just gain a little bit more life at this stage. And now we gain six. 
as I stack, which is brilliant, really good fun. Being rewarded. For, I love the fact that bounty agent sacrifice is just is a tap effect. What's the point of tapping and sacrificing it at the same time? I honestly don't understand that. Just sacrifice it. Oh, you, you did a mess up, did you? Christ alive, this is going to be funny if we can pull this off. Do we? He's holding council spell. Probably. Yeah, let's give it a go. No, he's just going to adapt. That's fun. Now attacks, and then we're going to gain 12 life. <laughs> That's funny. It's funny until the point he shatters the sky, and then we just cry. Ideally, the next draw here is going to be a land, and we'll attempt to get down possibly a Jhani. You have piqued my interest, sir. Ooh. Nice. It's a pretty looking card. Jesus wept. Right. We'll do Bounty Agent. And then we'll Law Rune Enforcer as well, because then we've got our tap, tap option there. And the joke is we can now tap March for three. Which I think is just hilarious. The explains not even a legendary. Oh boy. Yeah, let's see this kick off. This excites me greatly. <gasps> oh, this is going to be amazing. You're going to copy the next loom again because this is just already a brilliant, brilliant play. Interesting. I've not seen this played in standard before. Jesus wept. It's an 80 blue mana he's got available there. He can now just play his deck. This is so insane. So mental. I love this so much. What else could he run in there? If he shatters the sky, he's probably a moron. Oh, that's vile before he does that. I'll just get my three one one soldiers. That's great. Jesus Christ. That kicked off, didn't it? I think it's safe to say we haven't won this one. But this... I take back what I said at the start about him just playing a band, whatever it was. This is, this is the kind of jank we turn up for. What could you possibly be looking for? And how many cards have you got left in your deck? Oh, you're on. You got loads. Oh, well, that could be it. Each time you draw a card, did that. Yeah, so great. That'll kill us. Yeah, nicely done. That's fun. I like that. That was good fun. 
absolutely insane deck. Wow. Let's try that again. See how we go. Oh, it's so mental. I love it. Again, I'm probably one of the only people that will show you the games we play technically live. Most people just cut down and spend six years playing Arena to get four decent games on a video and convince you it's an amazing deck. I'm telling you straight up, this is complete crap. <laughs> but it's our crap. And no one can take that away from us. We've gone green there just because you've got Nissa, which definitely requires two green. I get Bounty Agent out. So he's black white, so I'm assuming he's cats. He's probably going to kill this off straight away. Although he's probably never seen it before. We'll soon see. Yeah, here we go. What's that? His cat element. Oh, he's only got three land. Or two land, rather. It's going to be fun. Let's just get a he bonded down against some life in the turns. Doesn't like that, does he? Uh, spring that in taps. He bonder again. Oh, you're playing some sort of mutate nonsense. Okay. Now, here's the beautiful thing Nissa's lands, when they come in, have vigilance. So we're now going to get extra life. And be able to swing every turn without fear of crack back, which is always fun. He might scoop if he didn't put a land, or just kill my land off instead. Also fine. It's fine. But I've still got eight technically, so we'll do this, and then we'll play Law Rune. Bear with me. Then we're going to play a Jane. And put counters in all of them. Because then this goes to eight. And now all of our creatures get vigilance still. And we're going to get three life in the turn. And next turn, we're going to Hwartley's Raptor. We're going to proliferate on everything, including the walkers. Unless he does that. Let's do one more very quick one with this, because that, that pinged. That was good. That's exactly how that should work. And also his was terrible. I feel bad for him only having two lands. It always feels like when you play people, either online or, in, or off your friends list, any one of these multiple thousands of people, um, and you say to them, oh, I feel really bad that you only got two land in the game. It feels so patronizing to say, but you feel like you have to say something because otherwise they're just going to sulk, which they're totally entitled to do. Um, we're going first. We've got two land hand with three foot, and that's a no. Mm, that's not much better. We'll go with it and probably drop. At this stage, I'm probably dropping Heat Bonder. Hey, buddy. You seem nice. You said hello to begin with. Not many people do that anymore. Yes, go Gary Adventure. Land. Questing Beast. Oh, setting up. He's setting up like a boss. And this, everybody, is why I'm right now to fort him. Because of its wonderful utility. I have said this to multiple people. I love, 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 love cards that say choose on them because it's just so versatile. Oh, there's blue in there. Oh, five wishes. Frozen Borrower. That works. Hello, Flaxen Intruder. You're fun. I don't see many people play you. Questing beast, however, it's going to hurt a bit. Yeesh. Here comes the clover, and he's probably going to do another giant. He's got three land on taps. Oh, that's a risky play. That's a really risky play.
Hello, Solander. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay you. And see what he comes up with now. I guess you're running five land. Yeah, that's sensible. Excellent stuff. You still don't got quite enough for anything else there. Um, we're going to end there and gain our two life of the heat bonder. And now Follendar's Felindar, I'm going to call it Felindar because it sounds better. Screw you, wizards. Um, can now tap stuff, or rather, heat bonder can because it's got vigilance. Which means we need to be really careful if we do <laughs> activate any of the bounty agent stuffs. This is my favorite thing. These videos are all recorded completely live. Oh my God, what a wonderful little card. I'm actually, before he does anything, going to tap down. But it's fine, it's tapped anyway. Queen of Ice. I'd never seen that card played before. I have know of it from like pre-releases and things, but I've never seen it played. Cool, I'll just block, and you're going to gain the life anyway, but I'd rather not lose mine. There we go. And now we don't attack, I'm going four life in a turn. Simple. Nice and simple there. What's he going to do? He's going to look for a couple of things. What are the things he's going to look for? Oh, okay. One, two, three, four. Yeah, he can cast it. Oh, that's upsetting. Oh, vicious. But which order is he going to do them in? Surely you're going to casualties of war. That would be the sensible thing to do. And then massively slow down me playing stuff out. Or are you just going to sit and have a minor panic? There we go. Next turn, he'll probably play the Flood of Tears. That's unfortunate. Now he's killed off a land. I can't do much. I'm not going to swing in. That's pointless. We'll kill off most things there. It's going to die anyway, which is fine. Surely you start swinging in with the Order of Midnight. Yeah, there we go. Let's kill it off. Could have done that earlier, to be fair. All right. Hopefully our next draw is a land. No, nope, he's going to bounce everything. Them. 
start hitting hard, shall we? Oh, he can't even cast Euro. Oh, that's unfortunate for you, mate. Yes, the Bears. Six Bears. None of which can block Questing Beast. Oh. Oh, that's worse. None of them which have haste. I feel like you should have done that first. Uh, uh. For someone that's nearly landed out their entire deck, this guy, and we were on four, we only were on five. We've done pretty well. I mean, he's definitely in control of the game. Let's like, be, not beat around the bush about that. Okay. Yep. We're going to stick this one out. Yeah. Nice. I feel like Eternity wasn't a card that was played a lot. I'm put it on top because then we can just play it again. Ah, now he can't lose by mil. That's interesting. I do love that play. It's a very interesting build, this. I don't know if it's ever been done before. I don't recognize it. I said we're going to see this one hour. He's taking so long to decide to do anything. It's almost not worth it. I can't stand people to take six years to decide a turn. Like you, did not, you should know what you do or you shouldn't be playing. That is us dead next turn. We're not going to win this by a long shot. We draw a Cresting Beast. We swing him with it. He blocks the Lich, bounces back. Yeah, it's game. Nice. Cool. Let's have a quick look at the other deck that we've got going on there. So that's our first Selesnia build. We'll take a very quick look at the second one. It's one I've used for quite a while. I did some minor adjustments to it um, more recently with the Akoria and Theros blocks coming out. So we go into Selesnia Life, which is a bit of a life gaining deck. We've got three copies of Healer Sork, two copies of Flower and Forish, uh, four Pride Mates, three Raise the Alarms, three Amaras. I quite like this card. Uh, two Heliads, four Heed Bonders again. Um, two Knights of Autumn, two Ajani's, four Conclave Tribunal, uh, two more Ajani's of the other variety, uh, three Fond Lands, two Tristani, three Marches, and then a nice little mix of lands going on down here. I didn't particularly want to put the Scry Lands in. This one's running 21, so I put the Life Ones in instead, because on turn three, if you can play a Pride Mate and then a Blossoming Sands, you're laughing. So we'll give this one a go. Again, no high hopes, everybody. Let's play a couple with this, see how we get on. My prediction is not well. Well, having said that, with the M21 spoilers that have come out, Life Gain is going to be a, I think, a really good deck next time around, purely because of that black white three drop, which is a one four. If you gain three or more life, deal some damage. It's mental. Okay. Let's get a creature on the board. Exciting. This is creatures entering the battlefield. This is what I was talking about in the thing before. Pride mate into the blossoming sands, put up on one counter on it. The next time we've got a heat bond already as well. Or we can tribunal this. Lots of stuff we can do. We're going to tribunal this. So we're actually going to uh, and then this one as well for there. 
and then we're going to play the hawk. We've gone nice and wide quite early on. Next turn, if we get a land, we'll stuff down the Johnny, stick a 1-1 one -one counter, everything, swing again. That's fine. That's not a problem for us. Um, okay, what we are actually going to do is we're going to be quite clever about this. Let's go one, two, three, four. This comes down, get rid of the banishing light, and then look for our new land. Play the land, swing for two life gain, two counters on a journey. Nicely done. Shout out the sky, I hate you. Imagine if that happened. It's gonna banishing like the Concrete Tribunal, to banishing like, oh, that'd be immense. Oh, what a wonderful play this is gonna be. So that goes, that comes in, gets rid of the pride point again. Love that. Good old tug of war. Nicely done, Ajani. All of our stuff's got vigilance as well, which means Amara is no longer tapping unless we're going to um, convoke something. Let's have a big swing, everyone. And then next turn, we know have Autumn on the banishing light. Ooh, exciting. There we go, cool. We'll do one more quick game of this. I think we'll call time on this video because I don't know how long I've been talking for. Probably way too long. Probably far too long for my own good. Let's go again. Ooh, dropping stuff. Mm, yes. Yes, stacking. <gasps> Fellow life gainer. I don't mind Linden being there. The Pride may, however, you can go. Mm, sure. Ooh, I like this card. We are going to pay the two. These can wait. Let's tribunal. We will land in this time because you didn't draw land. It's not swing. Next time, probably a Johnny, I think. We will block on this occasion because down to 12. Again, some back. Now, this time, we're actually going to swing first. Oh, no, we don't, because he's not tapping. Oh, you moron. Oh, well. We did a bad thing there. Oh, well. Sure. Just going to play a little game of life bounce, I think, here. Oh, you quit on that. Amazing. Okay. Right. Well, there we go, guys. That's two relatively similar but different takes on Slesnia decks. Um, I hope you've enjoyed today. Have a wonderful Saturday. The weather is meant to get better over here in Britain. And I will catch you guys later. Bye.